Hayward and Daniels, two center backs on the day as the ball floats over the top for Gonzalez to run onto. She has the speed and takes it around the keeper, has a tight angle, a very tight angle, but scores from the angle. Taylor Gonzalez opens the scoring on 13 minutes and the Falcons have a senior night lead. Fantastic through ball as Taylor Gonzalez runs to the sideline to congratulate teammate Valerie George. Absolutely comfortable. Garrison heads it out to Reeves. Made well. Dangerous pass to Hayward, who anticipates. Sarah Daniels completes the clearance, but it falls to Ellinger, who plays the ball in the direction of Germstead. Falcons eventually deal with it. Hampton Brinson, but again Ellinger intercepts. Kayla Walker spreads it out wide to Katie Mavelet, the right back. Sarah Flores trying to run at Madison Madewell. Ball inside to Ellinger. Ellinger and Logan Lewis will have to link up well. Lewis more of an assist provider. Ellinger as well as Walker and Germstead provide the goal threats, but have found the back of the net a difficult thing to come by. Not so much for Taylor Gonzalez who continues her fantastic start to this game. Runs at defenders. Hannah Center tackles it for a corner kick first of the game for the home side as Taylor Gonzalez, set piece specialist, prepares to take it. Gonzalez makes the signal. Madison Ellis not healthy, the tallest player on this team, but there are other threats in the box as they try to get it to one of them, Michaela Longenecker. Good clearance by Flores. Shot from afar from Madewell, optimistic. But the way the Falcons have started, you wouldn't begrudge them that. Opening 10 minutes, very tentative, but a great ball over the top. Taylor Gonzalez showed fantastic foot skill and rounded DeSantis. And from an acute angle, finished masterfully. Williamson. Falcons deadly when they're allowed space in the midfield, and today they have managed to do so. They already look a lot better than they do against Columbus State. The passes are a lot better paced. They were just sending the ball too heavy to each other or selling it short and allowed the Cougars to pretty much dictate the play through their passing style and majority of possession. Lander dominated the opening five minutes as far as possession, but they've recovered. But Garrison gives it away there and almost a chance out of nothing for George Ellinger. George Gid tries to go out to Flores, but it's well anticipated by Reeves. Flores. Ball over the top by Mavlet, cleared by Daniels. Williamson. Brinson hooks it away. Heavy touch by Gonzalez, but she recovers with a strong challenge on Ellinger. Falls to Garrison, whose pass is short. Thompson. Sarah Daniels up to complete the clearance. Sarah Daniels a junior from Madison, Mississippi, transferred into the program in the off season. Mavlet, inside to Thompson, who had to come on for the injured Sarah Balante, an injury which occurred only three minutes into the game. Clearance by Hampton Brinson to no one in particular. Garrison, slides it to Williamson whose ball for Gonzalez is a little too heavy. Carrie George. Kayla Walker down the left side. George tries to get the better of Longenecker. Walker smashes the ball in. Ellinger eventually has control and switches it to Mavlet. Mavlet and Flores trying to link up. They've been well watched by Reeves 
and Madewell on that right side. Ball through the legs of Gonzalez and for once her touch lets her down. Reeves back to Madewell. Tries to play a through ball for Tyler Ring which is cut out well by Mavlet. As their attack stalls. Ring. Williamson, good triangular passing. Garrison, a great ball over the top. Michaela Longenecker does well to get onto it. Tries to run against Caroline Casey. And commits a foul. Longenecker just obstructed. Kayla Walker to take the free kick. Falcons find themselves in the lead thanks to a 13 minute goal from Taylor Gonzalez. Almost already a fourth of the game done and after an opening five minutes the Falcons have looked the most likely to add on to the lead. Brisk passing and great movement early on from Coach Lane's side and his second season has already started the process of turning them around. Not many people anticipated a top eight finish. Falcons only expected to finish 11th out of 13th in the conference before the season in the preseason polls sitting at eighth right now could possibly improve on that position but definitely would like to hold on to a quarterfinal spot would be a massive accomplishment to return to the Peach Belt quarterfinals in their final year hasn't happened since 2012 and they haven't gotten a tournament victory since 2009 Kari George trying to work some space in the corner. Runs out of room. Throw in for Hampton Brinson on the right side. Halfway through the first half. The lone goal in the 13th minute. Hasn't been much of a response from Lander, but they look to build here. Give a lot of credit to the Montevallo defense for hanging with them. There's a shot in on goal. Looked close at first, but it was never troubling. Muyol, the effort from Logan Lewis. Diffing, but not quickly enough for the Bearcats striker. Lewis and Jermstead form the front line today in the traditional 4-4-2 Lander plays today. The system a lot of people thought was going out of style, really brought back into prominence by Leicester City in England. Have proved that it's a system that still works. They'll have to use their width, however. They've looked very narrow. Falcons doing well to pressure and keep possession. Muyol's goal kick. Header won by George. Defensive header by Hayward. Thompson. Ring disrupts play but cannot keep it in bounds. Under pressure by Kayla Walker. Strong tackle by Longenecker um, on Kerry George. Out for a throw in and first substitution of the day. For the Falcons, MJ Gray, the junior, comes in from Gadsden, Alabama. Provided a couple of assists on the year. Very practical player, does well to link up play in the center of midfield and plays some fantastic balls forward. Not really a flashy player. He's not a ball hog by any means. Definitely a quick passer and an instrumental player in the counter-attacking game. 
Right now, however, the Falcons on the front foot looking to create more to add on to Taylor Gonzalez's moment of brilliance. Heavy touch by Daniels. She does well to recover as it almost fell for Germstead, who would have been in on goal. Flores, Germstead, well watched by Gray, the substitute. Physical challenge, but fairly. Brinson with a nervous touch, but bailed out by Sarah Daniels, who plays a long ball over the top. Michaela Longenecker gets onto it, but cannot keep it in play. The 26th minute of play. A windy, cloudless afternoon in Montevallo, Alabama at Varsity Field. Good chest control by Ring. Gonzalez to Gray. Goes forward to Ring. Does a good one, too, with Gonzalez, who spreads it out wide to Longenecker. Right now, Lander chasing shadows right now as Montevallo building sustainable attacks. Gonzalez whips in across. Managed to get a foot in there. Almost found a teammate. Good interference by Mavelet. All hands on deck right now for the Bearcats. Good ball in the direction. Reeves had a second attempt. And it was a hit and hope ball from Brinson. Forced onto the crossbar by DeSantis and it almost fell for Allie Reeves as there's a player down. This time it's Katie Mavelet. She looks to be okay, however. We had worrying moments early on in the game. Sarah Palante went down and had to be replaced by Sydney Thompson. This time a much speedier recovery from Mavelet. Hannah Center to her fellow center back, Kayla Walker. Goes out wide to Caroline Casey. Ellinger comes back for the ball. Ring disrupts the attack. Longenecker plays the ball in for Gonzalez. Gets a deflection, but it takes it closer to DeSantis, who's quick off her line. The sophomore from Marietta, Georgia, has held off fellow goalkeepers Megan Wiley and Hannah Cohen, two freshmen that were brought in to compete for the starting job. He's had a very up and down season in goal, Shannon DeSantis. Ellen Muyal just getting a shout as she was being quickly closed out by Germstead. Brinson. Pass is a little too heavy for Longenecker. Goes out for a throw in. And Longenecker is out for the sideline in the long-awaited return from injury for Michaela Franklin. Freshman from Los Angeles, California, who was brought in in the offseason. Had a fantastic start to the season, which was dampened by an injury. Hasn't seen playing time since. It's great to see her back on the field. A different type of attacking threat for Coach Lade. She goes up top by herself, and Tyler Ring moves out to right wing. Tyler Ring so far has been more of a player with assists. She says she's working on her shots in practice, but that's the one part of her game she feels that is not completely up to scratch. It is keeping her from being a complete striker, but she's made great headway in her first year. As this ball almost breaks through, great play by Muyal off her line. Has to be alert on her feet to clear it out of bounds. Pierre was bearing down on goal. The senior from Lexington, South Carolina. Ball fizzed in by Pierre comfortably claimed by Muyal. <laughs> Ellie Muyal was instrumental in the 1-0 victory against Georgia College who were on the front foot for most of that game. A couple of Georgia College players were unhappy after the result, especially the coach who believed that their dominance should have resulted in a goal, but Montevallo caught them cold in the first minute of overtime through Hannah Williamson who benefited from a Allie Reeves cross who wins the ball back right there. Flores was just a little careless in possession. Gray spreads it to Garrison. Garrison looks for space. 
goes off the hand of Pierkowski, and the referee was right on the scene to spot it. Free kick for the Falcons. Garrison, who has great distribution skills no matter where she plays. Ali Reeves almost kept it in. The entirety of the ball went out of bounds. Mavelet with the throw. Made well up from right back to head it. Heavy touch by Flores, but she does well to recover. Mavelet with a wasteful ball down the side. Another substitution being prepared for the Falcons. Taylor Kukis coming on to replace Allie Reeves. Kukis started the first half of the season as left back and also played some as left midfield. Comes into the game. Looks like she's taking up a more attacking position right now. MJ Gray with a dangerous header in midfield and Ellinger was halved by Taylor Garrison's strong challenge. Referee deems that to be a foul. Garrison was certainly going for the ball but went straight through the player Ellinger. Definitely a size difference there. Ellinger has been on the receiving end of some strong challenges today. Walker over to take the free kick. Pierkowski trying to work on the defense. Not sure what that was from Kayla Walker. Had several options in the box. Went straight for goal. I'm not sure if it was intentional. Easy pickings for Ellie Muyal, who's been relatively comfortable in goal. Had a couple shots early on in the first 15 that were easily claimed. Since has been untroubled. Falcons yet to build on that lead. But have enjoyed the majority of possession. Lander just now responding, but we haven't seen too much of response since going down. Michaela Franklin on the ball right now, trying to run at goal. You would imagine a player from injuries touch wouldn't be top notch, especially when first coming back. But Michaela Franklin already looking smart on the ball. Throw it in the direction of Pierkowski, whose touch lets her down. Intercepted by Ring. Brinson tries to play it back to her, but Pierkowski recovers to make the interception. Ellinger. Casey plays it forward. Brinson completes the clearance. Doesn't find anyone, and it'll trickle through to DeSantis. MJ Gray with a header straight in the air. Ellinger's pace will take her into the ball, but Garrison was on hand to complete the clearance. Thompson. Pierkowski turns. But every time there's a Falcon that gets beat, they have support from another player. Fullbacks doing very well, Brinson and Madewell, to help out the midfielders. Madewell with the ball right now. Looking for runners. MJ Gray. Pressured by Flores and Ellinger. Bad ball by Hayward, intercepted by Ellinger. George has been quiet so far in the game. Carry George. Another good sliding clearance by Brinson, who's relishing that role at right back. George trying to get more involved in the game. Poor pass is intercepted by Ring, but it falls to Ellinger. MJ Gray is in close attendance and is very tight, forces the turnover. Franklin spreads it out wide to her strike partner, Ring. This time they cannot combine. Formed a great partnership at the beginning of the season and were scoring at will in games. Gonzalez. Does well to recover after a poor touch. Well defended, however, sent over the top by Thompson. Hayward does well. 
Gonzalez. Garrison. Falcons just trying to be a little bit quicker now on the ball. Ring almost played it through for Franklin. Gonzalez, excellent weighted pass to Ring. Good recovery by Kayla Walker forces a throw. Ten minutes to go in the half that is raced by here from Varsity Field as dusk approaches. The lone goal in the 13th minute from Taylor Gonzalez. It was a fabulous ball over the top, but a fantastic solo effort to take it around the keeper and score from a very tight angle and give the Falcons the lead. They were covering defenders, but Taylor Gonzalez made no mistake. Has an eye for goal and has scored more goals this year than she has in any other season. This is her third year at the university. Hampton Brinson completes the clearance under pressure from Pierkowski, who's looked lively since coming in the game. Coach Chris Ayer in his 11th year trying to take his team back to the Peach Belt Conference. Coach Lane in his second year for Montevallo looking for a first Peach Belt Conference appearance for Montevallo who are switching to the Gulf South Conference next year and would love to make a mark in the memories of the Peach Belt Conference. Falcons won in 2007. Montevallo yet to win a Peach Belt Conference game since 09 and yet to make the tournament since 2012. The fortunes looking to change now. Two games left in the season. Must wins against Lander and USC Aiken. Two teams that sit below them in the table. Right now Lander sit below them in the score line. Down a goal to nil. Montevallo have tried to add on it but haven't had any clear-cut chances. Hoisted ball forward by Brinson. Distribution has not been great, but she's been superb defensively. Garrison. Can't connect with anyone, and Thompson plays the ball over the top. Germstead, who's found service hard to come by, puts Daniels under pressure, who concedes a throw in. As George and the aforementioned Germstead make way, Lander preparing two substitutes. Flores, clearance by Madewell, out for a throw in. Ball played in by Mavlet, intercepted by Gray. Played back by Ellinger. Walker, almost a chance for Pierkowski cleared away. Walker trying to spread it to the left midfielder. Heavy touch, it's intercepted by Gonzalez. Six to go in the half. Brinson, again on her feet and quick to the ball. Not letting anyone pass her on that right side. Has looked a lot stronger in the challenge as she's grown accustomed to the right back role. Bearcats force a corner kick. Have a chance as we enter the 40th minute. Ellinger goes to the far side to take. Has a short option in the form of Casey. Clearance falls to Mavlet, switches it to Flores, delivers a high flighted ball, and Muyal does well to get off her line and claim it. There were a number of Bearcats in close attendance 
looking for a bobble or a drop, but the senior does well to keep her composure and claim it. Ellinger wins the ball defensively. Casey over the top. Hayward across well from center back. Holds off a defender and makes a good pass to Garrison. Garrison tries to spring the Falcons on an attack in the direction of Franklin. Tries to keep it in. A little too much pace on the ball for her to do so. Encouraging signs from the Falcons, however. They've done well to hold on to their lead, even if they haven't looked like doubling the scoreline. They've limited Lander to little, if any, chances. Garrison tries to turn on the defender but cannot maintain possession. Bearcats trying to make a furious run at the end. So far, not much has come off for them. Starting to become a little bit wider in formation. Visaggio tried to play a ball into the feet of Franklin. It's well cut out by the back line. Crossfield ball to Mavlet, who's immediately put under pressure by Kukis and goes back to center. Pierkowski. Visaggio tackled away by Ellinger, who again goes down. Thompson spreads it out wide. Madewell puts her under pressure, and Hayward will shepherd the ball back to Muyol. Gets a shout and comes off her line. Falcons looking to hold this lead into halftime. It would be a great boost of momentum for Coach Lane's side. Up one goal thanks to Taylor Gonzalez who's been prolific in front of the net this year. Garrison wide to Brinson who's allowed space. Visaggio good touch into, into area by MJ Gray. Deft touch out to Madewell. Madewell to Gonzalez, who lays it into the path of Gray. She can take a shot herself. Kind of got caught in two minds, didn't know whether to have a shot or feed it through to Franklin in the end. Got in between. Flores fails to control the ball out of the air. Garrison does well to beat Ellinger to the ball. Visaggio, who has fantastic distribution skills. Kukis slides the ball in. It's very dangerous. Completion by Kayla Walker. But Madewell's forward. Gray, ball got stuck under her feet for a moment. Does well to maintain possession. Kukis has another chance at the cross. Mavlet blocks it. Bearcats trying a counterattack down the left flank. Almost gets it forward for Pierkowski who was the only forward player, but the Falcons intercept it, and they still have numbers in the Bearcat half. But good defending by Casey to put that to an end as the game has started to open up in the final couple minutes. A first half that has flown by. Started off relatively dour, but has become entertaining as the half has worn on. A lot in part to the Falcons scoring and forcing the Bearcats to kind of gamble a little bit and send numbers forward. Flores, one of those players on the ball now, tries to spread it to Mavlet and a very strong challenge by Kukis. The fans appreciate it. Subtle flick into the path of Flores. Clearance wasn't enough. Brinson cuts it out. Challenged by Ellinger. Forces it to Walker, who has a shot from afar. Muyal just looking over her shoulder to make sure it went over the net as the Falcons make two substitutions with 30 seconds remaining. Garrison and Franklin making way. 
senior Abby West into the game as well as Vic Whitehouse. Defensive header by Thompson, who didn't start the game but came on for Sarah Belante, who is injured early on. Taylor Kukis trying to get control. It's an interesting battle going on between Mavelet and the Falcons' left-sided players. As we come to a close to the end of the first half, 1-0 from Varsity Field on senior night, the final home game for the Falcons. Lead thanks to Taylor Gonzalez's 13th minute goal. We'll be back for the second half. Massive Peach Belt Conference clash between the Falcons and the Bearcats. Seth Brown. Moving on to Donnie Barnes. Just in the first round, Dan Graber. Just off the mark. All right, we're coming back to Michael Doggett again. Round two, Michael Doggett. Nice touch. Just has to go. Bailey Hurford. Samuel. Moving on to 
Morgan Daniels. Morgan Daniels. Morgan Daniels. Morgan could be the first one. Moving on to the men's. Cross the goal. It's in. Morgan Daniels. Congratulations. You're moving on to the championship round during half time of the men's game for your shot at the 40s class three TV. Walker Price, can you join her? Walter Price will also be participating in that championship round. So we've got two moving on. Austin Burwell, can you make it three in a row? Just off the mark, Seth Brown, here's your chance. A little off the mark, Danny Barnes. <laughs> there and almost, Dan Graber. All right, round three coming up. Round three coming up, Morgan Daniels and Walker Price are already there. Can anybody else join us? We're going back to Michael Doggett. Start it off. Oh, just off the mark. Bailey Hurford. Tatiana Samuel. Austin Burwell. And Austin is moving on to the championship round. Congratulations, Austin Burwell, Seth Graham. Can you join them? Johnny Barnes, final shot. All right, Dan Graber. Dan Graber, your final chance. Just off the mark, Monet Trader has shown up since. She was also on the list of those who made a goal this season, so she's going to get three shots at it to make up for the three rounds. So our final participant, Monet Trader, can she join the three moving on to our championship round? No luck on the first shot. Here comes number two. And finally, one more shot at advancing to the championship round for Monet Trailer. Thank you all for participating in our season-long contest. We have our three finalists, Morgan Daniels, Walter Price, and Austin Burwell will compete at halftime of the men's game for a 40-inch flat screen TV. Make sure to stick around. Again, Morgan Daniels, Walter Price, and Austin Burwell will be our three participants in the finals for that 40-inch flat screen TV at halftime of the men's game. The University of Montgomery would like to thank its corporate partners, Booster Digital, Full Moon Barbecue, Candlewood Suites, and Alabaster. 
Thus Mark Bank, Holiday Inn Express and Pella, Coca-Cola, Shelby County, Huddle House, University Inn and Suites, Bob Butterworth with State Farm Insurance, BSN Sports, Paper Woodley, Steak and Shake, College Cable, Lee Mac Health, Pizza Hut, Main Street Tavern, Jacks, Renaissance Bank, Dick Sporting Goods, and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama. Thank you for supporting the Falcons. The Falcons College in Action program is a program on campus that allows students to gain valuable, valuable professional skills by serving their community and nonprofit Shelby County agencies. Students completing the program are provided with a modest monthly financial stipend as well as an honors board at graduation. The program application and more information can be accessed through the Office of Service Learning and Community Engagement website at www.legacy.montevallo.edu slash OSL or by emailing falconscholars at montevallo.edu. more shots. Uh, thanks for participating this year, Kevin. Again, our three finalists, Morgan Daniel, Walker Price, and Austin Burwell, halftime of the men's game for a 40-inch flat screen TV. Same thing we just did, three rounds, and you got to make it in that round. Or if and they keep going, it's like if they don't make it in a, like if they go full round, nobody makes it, they just start over. And then the first round where one makes it, the other two don't. Like, congratulations. So it's just like, because everybody, well, yeah, same situation. Because I think that they're, they're only going to make one of those three picks if they make any. We could go to four rounds without them making any, any making the pick. Yeah, three rounds to make a kick, and then the fourth round is like everybody gets a chance, but one person misses. Yeah. They all move on to the next round. Like you go to another round. Like if they make it in the yes. Everybody gets three kicks. Yes. One of those three. So what happens? Yeah. Then the one that didn't make it in those three rounds is out, and they the two come back and they keep going like. Got to make it to stay in. If they both miss it, they both get another shot. A sudden death. Except unless it's the first person makes it, the second person gets a shot to make it and keep it going. Yeah. 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 Sudden death. Yeah. But I don't think they're gonna make. I think it would be the one that makes it will kind of. Yeah. 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 Third round. Yeah. 
rock, paper, scissors is who goes first. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, make sure he's on board. No, Morgan Daniels, uh, Walker Price, and Austin Burwell. Welcome back to Varsity Field. I'm Alex Tejada, start of the second half. University of Montevallo, Falcons up 1-0. Taylor Gonzalez scored a 13th minute goal in the first half. Lander started the game on the front foot, but the Falcons looked the most comfortable in the half after the opening goal. Early foul and a free kick taken by Taylor Gonzalez, claimed by DeSantis in goal. <laughs> Pierkowski, who impressed after coming on as a sub, stays in the game. Hey, the, uh, it's right now it's just lots of red. Ellinger. Pass in the direction of George is intercepted by Longenecker. Plays it forward to Ring. Ellinger and Longenecker in a battle, okay. which Ellinger wins, but Brinson does well to cover. Ellinger shrugs off a challenge and plays it to the middle to Logan Lewis. Spreads it wide to Caroline Casey. Carry George. Another dangerous pass inside. She turns into Longenecker, but she gets the ball back. Lewis tries to spread it. Goes off. Skims off the head of Taylor Garrison. Madison Madewell does well to keep it in bounds. Second half with a frenetic start. Kayla Walker. Bearcats will have to go for it in this second half. Didn't offer too much of a response after going down. But imagine if they're still trailing in the 70th minute. They would throw on a lot more attackers. Right now relying on Logan Lewis up top as well as Pierkowski. No sign of Germs Germstead. Ellinger. Tries to pay it out to Flores, who's been well marshaled by Madison Madewell. And on this occasion, Sarah Daniels forces a corner kick, the first of the half. Dangerous opportunity for the Bearcats. Tyler Ring comes back from her forward position in the box. Logan Lewis preparing the corner. Pierkowski being marked by Garrison. Brinson watching George. Ball played in at the near post. Good connection. We couldn't fashion a dangerous chance. A hint of a chance for the Bearcats. Opening four minutes the second half. Defensive header by Walker. Gonzalez can't make control and Walker can run the defense and plays the ball to Pierkowski. Pierkowski cuts inside of Daniels. It's well cut out.
Pirakovsky closed down by Reeves. Allie Reeves, who was very isolated in the first half, she was replaced by Taylor Kukas, who did a lot more defending than attacking. Courtney Hayward steps across the block. Casey. The ball sent in by Flores. Trickles through to Ellie Muyol comfortably enough for the senior from Mountain Brook. Brinson, Longenecker, two players. George intercepts it. Casey, Ellinger works a one-two. Well read by Brinson who cuts her off. Kayla Longenecker does well to hold off Ellinger. Wins the throw in. Both teams know the importance of this game. Eight versus nine, the conference is Taylor Gonzalez does well to skip away from Casey. Spreads it out wide to Tyler Ring. Longenecker, floated over the top. Dangerous position, defensive header. Second opportunity for Ring. Moment of confusion, the defense. Walker, anywhere will do as the Bearcats under immense pressure from the Falcons. It's Gonzalez. Ring. It's another cross. It almost falls for Reeves, if not for the intervention of Walker. And there might be a break on here. Lewis. Spread out wide to Flores. Lewis gets it back. Hayward up far. And Ali Reeves with a strong challenge on the back of Lewis. Nothing malicious. Referee allows the quick restart without any further action. Lewis on the ball now. Reeves nips in fairly this time as Madison Waywell plays the ball off of the advancing Lewis and the danger is gone at least for the time being. An entertaining first half. It's been replicated in the second half. Good clearance by Madewell. Sarah Daniels with tight control on Lewis. Almost a chance for Pierkowski. It was well blocked by Hayward. Casey trying to serve a ball in the box. It's cut out by Hayward, who had to be alert. One of three seniors in the starting lineup, along with the goalkeeper, Ellie Muyal and Longenecker on the right side. This time, Taylor Gonzalez runs to the defense and almost fell into the path of Tyler Ring. Gonzalez, they spread it out wide to Madewell. The Falcons a lot, looking a lot more dangerous attack, and there's a mistake there by center. Ring almost capitalized on it, but in the end, Defender got the better. Navelet was the recovering defender, got inside and was fouled by Ring. Quick free kick taken by DeSantis in goal. Defensive header by the midfielder Garrison. Caroline Casey chases the ball down, plays it through the legs of Longenecker. Hayward does well to recover, has a fantastic first touch and tries to spring the attack. Ring plays it to Gonzalez. Plays a great ball to Reeves. Was just hustled off of it. Opportunity to counter on the right side. Flores finally getting some space. Plays it down the channel. Lewis trying to work a yard of space. is closed out. Garrison gets it away. Another awkward moment in the defense for Hannah Center. Gonzalez, lovely flick touch. She runs onto her own touch. Almost got the ball stuck underneath her feet, but she continues to advance. Runs at Mavelet. One step over, cuts inside, works it onto her right foot and has an effort. Oh, what an effort. Double for Taylor Gonzalez, who's having a fantastic game. The 54th minute. Falcons have doubled the lead on senior night. Unbelievable solo run again by Taylor Gonzalez. She's definitely in the mood tonight. 
ran at Mavelet, did well to step over, cut inside, and once she fixed it onto her right foot, there wasn't much DeSantis could do in goal. That one flew up her right corner. Coach Lane will know, however, the most dangerous lead in soccer, the 2-0. Falcons showed that when they came back to tie Clayton State 2-2 after trailing 2-0 at halftime. The free scoring Falcons we've seen at points in this season against Georgia Southwestern and Francis Marion looks to have shown up today as well. But Taylor Gonzalez, two solo fantastic goals. Fantastic player, a lot of people have said She's a little too isolated when she plays in a forward attacking role. Playing in the midfield today with Tyler Ring up top has allowed her to get into space behind the striker. And the Bearcats either haven't done their homework or have afforded her too much space because the junior from Overland Park, Kansas has two goals and the Falcons in this important clash between eight versus nine Look to have gotten the first half of this important task in the final two games. Two wins necessary to make the Peach Belt quarterfinals. They're well on the way to getting that first win here, but a lot of the game still to be played. Almost half the game still to be played. And the way the, the pace has been, you wouldn't expect it to stay this scoreline. Certainly not. Pierkowski plays the ball in the direction of Lewis. One of the most exciting encounters we've seen all season from the Falcons as Hampton Brinson tries to keep it in. Speedy player, but cannot keep her balance and the ball in bounds. Coach Ayer will know that a response from his side is needed. I assume changes will be imminent, but the Falcons are the ones with players getting ready. They make their substitution now, Kukas Franklin Hannah Williamson coming into the game. Allie Reeves, the goal scorer, Taylor Gonzalez, and Tyler Ring making way. Assistant coach Wyman just instructing the substitutes where to take up the positions. Seems to be like for like subs. Taylor Kukas on the left side. Hannah Williamson is the attacking mid playing underneath the striker. Michaela Franklin, other Michaela Longenecker with a touch, carries it out of bounds, throw in for the Bearcats, who find themselves down two goals. And really just lapses in concentration by giving Taylor Gonzalez too much space. A couple nervy moments for Hannah Sinner as well at the back. And if the first goal was something to marvel at, the second goal was truly something special. Taylor Gonzalez, an absolute bullet from outside the box. The first goal was a breakaway in which she rounded the keeper and scored from a tight angle. Having a great night. And was already in the hunt for a hat trick when she comes back in the game, which we would assume once she gets a rest would happen as Hannah Williamson, her replacement, gets fouled. This project of rebuilding Montevallo women's soccer only began last year, but is already making massive strides under coach Robert Lane, a player himself at East Carolina, highly accomplished. And a first-year assistant coach brought in Jake Wyman. Michaela Franklin on the ball now. Does well to hold off a defender, showing one of her many assets, which is strength as a striker. Visaggio with a huge effort from afar, and why not? Just over the top, proving the threat from afar. Seen Visaggio as well as Whitehouse have a go from afar this season. DeSantis has been beaten twice. Perhaps 
could have done something about the first goal. Did well to close down the angle, but Taylor Gonzalez completed that run. And again, Hannah Center looking very uncomfortable when put under pressure, this time by Michaela Franklin, and it forces a throw in the attacking third. And the Falcons on some days cannot find those passes in the attacking third to create cutting edge chances. Today, however, look ruthless and dangerous every time they go forward. And with a very similar lineup to against Columbus State. So credit Coach Lane for doing the work in midweek, getting his girls ready for this massive game on the back of two 4-0 defeats against top teams in the conference. Games today against Lander and fellow South Carolina team, USC Aiken. That one next week will be an away game at USC Aiken. Team that has only won two conference games this season but has also won four games like Montevallo. So certainly not a team to ride off, nor are Lander. Only trail by two. Not a mountain to climb, but certainly a very tall hill as they find themselves in a two-goal hole with the Falcons moving the ball very nicely. Lander opened the game looking the most likely but after an injury to Sarah Belante have looked nervy at the back Taylor Gonzalez have punished them on two occasions goal kick by Muyal Garrison wasn't sure where it was going to fall anticipation by George Pierkowski trying to work a yard of space. Closed out by two Falcons. As Daniels forces the corner, Madewell was in close attendance. Ellinger up to take the corner. George is on the keeper. Flores will attack the ball on the corner kick, was just beaten to it by Madewell but he'll fall for the corner kick taker. Ellinger who feeds the ball inside. It almost fell to Pierkowski and there's a chance and pulled one back. Lander find themselves on the score sheet. It's an open contest and even more so. The Bearcats get their first goal of the game. Half the deficit. And some slack marking from a corner kick. It's costly to the Falcons. Go, Michaela! Just some renewed life. For the Bearcats, Flores. Plays it forward to Lewis. Lewis starting to find more space in the midfield. It didn't look like the score would stay the same, and it certainly hasn't. See what the Falcons' character is made of. If they can hold on to the lead or add to it, perhaps. Throw in on the left side for Caroline Casey. Looking for runners off the ball, doesn't have many options, but throws it in to George. Carey George feeds across in, and Muyal smart off her line. It almost fell right onto the head of Lewis. Fantastic decision making by the senior goalkeeper who won her spot back halfway through the year and was the star player against Georgia College. Made a string of fantastic saves throughout the game, none more so than two minutes from time. to preserve the tie in which Hannah Williamson won the game in overtime and has put the Falcons in an excellent position to make the quarterfinals. 
loose pass there. A little bit of hesitation on the part of George. Almost was intercepted by Brinson, but she maintains control. Goes back to center, who switches it. Open space on the right side. Taylor Kukas looking to close down. Mavlet. Ellinger. Just brushed aside, but illegally, by Val Visaggio. A relatively aggressive game compared to many of the other contests for the Falcons. And the referee just having a word with Michaela Franklin. I believe she was trying to obstruct the quick free kick from being taken. The referee just giving her a warning. It's good refereeing instead of flashing the cards. Just having a word with the player first. Muyal's punt goes out of bounds. The Bearcats are asking the questions now on the front foot after scoring that goal as they make two substitutions. One of them up top. It's one of their prolific goal scorers. Germstad. Chance though forming for Michaela Longenecker who plays the ball inside, a great save by the goalkeeper. It might fall to Visaggio whose effort is turned in. The goalkeeper got a hand to it but couldn't keep it out and the two goal lead is restored for the Falcons. Val Visaggio, a freshman who's had a wonderful year at defensive center mid, gets in on the scoring. The first shot was turned aside by the goalkeeper's left foot. Michaela Longenecker down the right wing, but when it fell to Vic Vis Val Visaggio, she rifled it in, and the goalie has to pick it out. Her hand was not enough to force it wide. Nestled in the left corner. Two-goal lead restored for the Falcons. Three to one. And you wouldn't predict this to be the end of the scoring either. It's been a fantastic open contest. Loose control here. Michaela Franklin almost nipping in and winning it. Kayla Walker. It will be frustrating for the Bearcats who pull the go back and we're on the front foot moving forward. Now they have it all to do yet again with little over a fourth of the game remaining. Val Visaggio getting her first goal of the season. As I mentioned, she's been a rock in defensive center mid. Hasn't started the last couple games. Just got caught under the feet of Germstad. Pass was intercepted. Flores. Lewis turns. Tries to work a shot, well blocked by Sarah Daniel. Looked to be causing her pain, but she's struggling it off. Good effort put in on goal, very optimistic, however, too far out for Ellinger. And Muyol will say keep those efforts coming. As long as it's outside the box, she'll feel confident in claiming those out of the air. Punt goes over the head of Garrison. Does well to win it at the second attempt. Franklin running at center. Falcons attackers have done well to torment her all day. Ellinger helps back. White Williamson's on the ball now. Almost fell into the path of Franklin. Again, Visaggio linking up well with Garrison. Spreads it out wide to Brinson who has some space. Smart pass from Brinson back to Sarah Daniel. Floats the ball over the top. cut out by the right back and the, the Falcons attack stalls this occasion. Lewis trying to work some space. Has to go back under pressure from Kukis. Ball over the top. An open George on the left side. Muyo's out of her net. George comes for it and scores. A bit of confusion at the back for the Falcons. Muyol and Hayward in a bit of confusion. 
George nipped in. Fantastic run down the left side. Took it inside of the keeper and had an empty net, and she was never going to miss from there. Slots it away for 3-2. Game on. Mass substitution now for the Falcons. Longenecker, Kukas, Franklin, Visaggio make way for Vic Whitehouse. Taylor Gonzalez, who's already trying to pump up the team. Tyler Ring and Allie Reese in the game. 23 remaining. Captivating contest. 3-2 from Varsity Field. Tyler Ring fouled by Ellinger. Referee allows play to continue. Taylor Gonzalez on the ball. Lovely weighted pass. Ball intercepted by Flores. Pays it to Germstead, who's quickly closed down. And Whitehouse wins the ball back well. And a foul, however, committed by the freshman from Las Vegas, Nevada, who has formed a partnership with Val Visaggio in the center of midfield. Now she's on the field with Taylor Garrison, who started the season at center back, but is reverted back to center defensive mid, which she played last year. Made well with the throw. Good character from the Bearcats. Clawing back after falling behind by two goals for a second occasion. Pulled it back to one. And just like after they scored their first goal, looking the most likely here, Montevallo did well to grab the third. Fake pass by Gonzalez. Eventually Springs Ring, who turns on center, who's having a very difficult night. She does well to recover, however, but the Falcons have a corner. Allie Reeves across to take it this time. Hayward and Daniels coming up from the back. Whitehouse and Williamson on the edge of the box. Tyler Ring and Taylor Gonzalez in the box. Ring on the keeper. Gonzalez lurking around the penalty area. Little under a quarter of the game to go as we enter the 70th minute. A signal from Reeves. Corner kick. DeSantis tries to read the flight of it. Gets a hand on it. Just about gets it away there. George. One back by Reeves. Strongly away from Lewis. Ring turns. Plays it in the path of Gonzalez. She almost wanted to have a go. Williamson. Good touch, but it took her into Mavelet. George. Spreads it to Lewis. Ball over the top. Cut out by Garrison. And the ball is allowed to bounce by center. Keep her quick off her line. Tyler Ring was bearing down on goal. Garrison header. Mavlet going forward. The final 20, Lander Bearcats will pour everything forward. A tie does neither team very much good. Eight versus nine, both teams going hammer and tongs at each other, looking for a win, which will take them into a great position in clinching a quarterfinal spot. Ball sent into the box. To no one in particular goes behind the goal. Falcons preparing a substitution. <laughs> Hannah Williams and the player being replaced. Little surprise there. But she'll make way temporarily. Allow Michaela Longenecker to go to right wing. Taylor Gonzalez takes up the attacking mid position. She's, again, she's looked isolated on the right flank, something that's been a problem for her this year. Now playing a lot more centrally. Longenecker does well to turn on center, plays the ball in the box. Ring has a brilliant first touch, almost brings it down with her left. Falls out to Whitehouse. Cleared away by Ellinger. 
Fall for Jermstad, who's the only player forward but is now getting help in the form of Lewis. Running at Garrison. Forcing the midfielder wide, tries to play it back to Garrison, but great covery by Sarah Daniels, who's forced her way into the starting spot and it hasn't looked back since. Allie Rees with pressure. Flores trying to link up with Walker. Cannot manage to do so. It'll be a throw in for the Falcons. 73rd minute of the game. Poised at a knife's edge. 3 2, home side. Goal summary, 13th minute, Taylor Gonzalez. Falcons doubled their advantage after half. Through a absolute screamer from Taylor Gonzalez from outside the area, was allowed to run at the defense, but their advantage was halved before Val Visaggio restored it to 3-1. Since then, Lander has pulled the goal back to make it 3-2. Ball skips off the hand of Ellinger and a free kick awarded. After cutting it to 3-2, Lander looked the most dangerous, but Montevallo has now dominated possession in the last five minutes. In the direction of Ring, but Mayblet wins it first. Heavy touch from Whitehouse. Lewis, good recovery by Garrison. Out to Caroline Casey as Garrison stays down. Play continues. Casey. Jermstead is fouled by Hayward. Gives Garrison the chance, however, to find her feet again. Lander, free kick around midfield, pouring players forward. Walker over the ball. She takes the set pieces for the Bearcats. Looking for a better delivery than she's had so far today. Players making runs in the box in the direction of Flores. Over the head of Ellinger, headed away by Garrison. Ring by herself with three players to run at. Does well to get round Walker, running at Mavlet now. Mavlet trying to force her outside. Ring is fouled. And Montevallo have a free kick in a dangerous area. Just played the ball to one side of Mavlet and tried to run onto it and was obstructed. Mavlet had trouble with. Gonzalez perhaps didn't have tight enough coverage, allowed the junior to lash in a shot from all of 20 yards out. However, it's Val Visaggio's second attempt goal after Michaela Longenecker's initial shot was saved. That's the difference in the game. Ball in the direction of Ring, who's on the back post. Casey was there to make sure she didn't get a chance to swing a right foot at it. DeSantis, Ellinger flicks it on, no one there. Intercepted by Whitehouse. Ring has options to play it through, just delays Garrison. Gonzalez, Reeves, plays the ball back in the box, defensive header by Mavlet. And a counter attack is on. Flores. Players out of position now. Gonzalez trying to recover, and Madison Madewell, who's been flawless again today, makes the clearance. Pierkowski returns to the action for the Bearcats. Lewis makes way. Reminding you that immediately following this game is the men's half of this doubleheader, playing Lander Bearcats as well. However, they are top of the division in the men's half. Falcons four and three in the conference, but share the overall 10-3 record that the Bearcats enter the game with. However, the visitors are seven and zero in conference. After starting one and three, they've been nine and zero since. That game starting at 7:30, approximately 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one, but there are still 14 minutes. We've enjoyed the opening 75. Would expect we'll do so the same as the game continues to be wide open. Seems to be the case when an early goal is scored and the 13th minute opener by Taylor Gonzalez has set this game alight. Ellinger, who's worked hard 
in the midfield. Walker, who's now playing farther forward and leaving two, three players back in the defense as they have to gamble going forward to try to force overtime. Daniels did well to shrug off a challenge, wins the free kick in the process. Walker commits the foul. Garrison will look to feed a ball over the top. Smotavallo has numbers forward in the form of Gonzalez and Longenecker joining Tyler Ring. Ali Rees moving forward as well. Longenecker tried to bring it down. Ellinger controls. Weighted ball into Germstead. But fantastic concentration by Garrison to win the ball back. Ring running at goal. Looking for options, uses her pace, and again, Mayflet takes her down. This is the second time Mayflet has done so, and the referee may go to his pocketbook for the first time today. He has a decision to make here. Will he have a word, or will he produce the game's first card? I believe he is erring on the side of caution. Does not produce a card. However, an accumulation of fouls now for Mayflet. She's certainly in risky territory. Taylor Gonzalez over the ball for the free kick. Four man wall for the Bearcats. Gonzalez goes direct for goal and it goes off the crossbar. Falcons following it in and a goal. The flag stays down. Tyler Ring and the two goal advantage is restored again for a third time. 77th minute, four to two. The home side have been in free scoring form. And even though she didn't get the hat trick, Taylor Gonzalez rifled it off the crossbar. And Tyler Ring was the first to anticipate the rebound and got on it. Four to two. Bearcats have it all to do yet again. Montevallo have looked deadly in front of goal today. And another opportunistic chance pounced on by Tyler Ring, and her gold drought is now over. Ellinger spreads it out wide. Definitely going to be pouring numbers forward now. Coach Ayer will tries to play a ball in the path, and a great shot saved by Muyo. Almost got it immediately back. George with the effort. Muyo had to be down quickly to her right, and on senior night, the senior keeper Keeps the two goal advantage, four to two. Longenecker tries to run onto it, but Casey will just shepherd it out of play. The game has been played at a fantastic pace throughout. Ring to run onto it. She's looked lively, fantastic control of the ball again this time. Runs at center, who comes too close to her, and she wins a corner kick off of her. Center has had a difficult night keeping up with the Montevallo forwards does not win a corner. I think it rebounded back off a ring for a goal kick nonetheless. Fantastic run by the freshman from Swansboro, North Carolina. Ellinger beats Longenecker to the ball. The White House wins it. Ellinger gets a second chance. Walker turns into Reeves. It's closed down. Gonzalez, who looks in the mood to have a hat trick, holds off Casey, has a covering defender. Garrison's touch is heavy. Ellinger nips in. She's really been the creator in the midfield for everything going forward for Lander. Montevallo know how crucial a victory would be in keeping an eighth place spot. Again, risky moment for center. Goes behind her. Mavlet spreads it out wide. Allie Reese. Walker's pass is errant, goes out of bounds. Madewell has done well for the Falcons to limit the number of opportunities down that right flank. Walker clears it away. Ellinger picks up the pieces. They try to go forward again with Casey. Spreads it out wide. Lovely control by George. Plays it back into Casey, who's put under pressure. Area of high concentration. Almost sprung ring through. A lovely pass from Gonzalez. DeSantis was quick off her line. 
10 to go. 4-2 here at Varsity Field as the chill of the fall night has crept in. Allie Reeves. Does well to skin her defender, Walker. Almost broke for Gonzalez. Offside. Allie Reeves runs onto it, the referee. And eventually the referee gets the offside call. Allie Reeves was the one in the offside position. Out of play for a throw in. Sarah Daniels across to take. 82nd minute, 4-2, eight versus nine. Pivotal clash in deciding who makes the Peach Belt quarterfinals which will take place starting November 1st, a week from this Wednesday. Gonzalez does well to hold off a defender. They can't manage to get it back, but they've won a corner kick and another opportunity to load the box. Hayward coming up, the senior from Ontario Has had a great game in her final home outing in a Falcons uniform. Short corner. Goes back to Gonzalez, who's closed down by Mayblit. Has to settle for a throw in. Looking for someone to make a run. Into Reeves. Those two have combined very well throughout the season as a partnership has been formed on that left side between the two. Ball put in the box, it's cut out at the expense of another corner as we enter the 83rd minute. Gonzalez gives the signal, plays it short again. Reese, a delivery, wins yet another corner kick. In a similar area in which she provided the assist for Hannah Williamson in the victory over Georgia College. Another short corner. And another throw in. Falcons just looking to keep possession and protect the two goal advantage. Ring trying to turn in the box is crowded out. Reeves almost wins it back, but there's a chance of a break here if they could spread it quickly. George with space. Longenecker recovering. Casey, Carrie George, forward, a great flick on into the path of Pierkowski, who had a very late challenge. I'm not sure if the ref saw that follow through on Sarah Daniels. Monreal had the flick on, Antonella Monreal, who's come up off the bench. Another forward threat, Pierkowski, good cross, cut out by Hayward. Almost fell for Monreal again. Ball sent in, side netting. Substitution for the Falcons. Taylor Kukis replaces Allie Reeves. And Monreal will make way as well for Lewis. Coach Lane looks to have gotten his tactics right today. Falcons have looked very fluid in possession. The passing has been magnificent. It's put the Bearcats under pressure from the off. Corner kick. Actually a goal kick. It looked to, to get another deflection. Again, Tyler Ring not afforded the benefit of the doubt. And DeSantis will go across to claim as we enter the final five minutes. Intercepted in the midfield by Garrison. Looks to have a shot, sides against it, cuts inside, plays it short to ring, and it almost formed a chance. Casey. Ring.
Lewis runs out of space. Bearcats are starting to run out of time as well. In the closing moments of the game. Still a chance, however. Five minutes is an eternity when you're trying to hold the lead. It will feel even longer for Coach Lane. Kukas. Gonzalez. One back by Ring, who's having a fantastic game and continues to do so. Gonzalez looking for the hat trick. Goalkeeper down to her side. The rebound falls to Longenecker, who sends the ball in. A good recovery by DeSantis to claim it. It would have been a fantastically special moment on senior night for senior Michaela Longenecker, who's contributed goals for the Falcons on numerous occasions. She will hope it is already job done, though, for the Falcons, and they will not rue that chance. Brinson. Some tired legs for the Bearcats. The Falcons just really rejuvenated by that fourth goal and the substitutes. The players have been kept fresh, and they look the ones with the better stamina right now as Casey just has to force it out for a throw-in. Longenecker with the throw. Falcons taking their time. 87th minute. Referee just instructing them to hurry up. Throw intercepted by Casey. One back by Longenecker. Gonzalez can run at the defense. Plays a low ball inside to Tyler Ring. Gets a touch on it. Almost falls into the corner. The goalkeeper got a touch on it and has stayed down. Referee Adabit that the trainer comes out quickly. Looks like Tyler Ring's effort caught the shin of the goalkeeper who was out quickly off her line and got just enough of the ball to take the direction away from goal as it looked to be nestling in the bottom left corner. Three fifteen on the clock. Four to two. Two goals from Taylor Gonzalez, one from Val Visaggio, and one from Tyler Ring. Concern, however, for the keeper is Megan Wiley. Looks to be warming up, putting on her gloves. If the goalkeeper cannot continue. Goalkeeper will stay on the field, looks to have recovered. I'm sure that will be a sore one, however, as the Falcons prepare substitutes. Huge moment coming up for senior Jessica St. John in her final game. Tyler Ring, Taylor Kukis, and Michaela Longenek are making a sub as the fans give a rousing applause to the three seniors coming on, Valerie George, and Abby West is long with Jessica St. John into the game. Standing ovation from the Montevallo faithful. And Jessica St. John in immediately to take the throw in. Strong challenge by St. John, has an instant impact, tries to play a ball through. It's intercepted by Lewis. Gonzalez intercepts it from the midfield, will run it goal, still wants that hat trick, unselfishly plays it into Whitehouse. Whitehouse tried to work it onto her right foot, but she was closed down, the effort was blocked by Mavlet as we enter the final. 
three minutes. Madewell, heavy touch, does well to recover. Virtually flawless performance again from the freshman from Huntsville, Alabama, who has transformed this back line. Was guilty of shipping a few easy goals last year. Has stiffened up, become a lot more stingy. Touch by Walker. Touch of Pierkowski was heavy and allowed Garrison to intercept. Garrison has a distance, has an effort from far out. We approach the final 100 seconds from Varsity Field. Immediately following this game, the men's half of the doubleheader taking on the top of the conference, Lander Bearcats. A very different proposition for the Falcons men's team as they look to clinch home field advantage in the Peach Belt Tournament as they sit currently fifth in the table. Out wide to Casey. Bearcats looking to mount a comeback or at least get a late consolation goal. George. In fairness to them, they've come out and give it a go. They've played a very attacking lineup. The Falcons were just virtually ruthless today and a strong challenge by Jessica St. John. Another one by Sarah Daniels plays the ball forward. Anywhere will do as we enter the final 60. This win has massive implications as it keeps the Falcons in the top eight, but they cannot rest on their laurels as they have it all to do again next Saturday at USC Aiken. That game is slated for a four o'clock central kickoff. Defensive header by St. John out for a throw in. It's good to see Jessica St. John enjoying her soccer out there. Hayward clears it out for a corner kick. We approach the final 13 seconds. They have to take it quickly. Looks like a case of too little too late as they will not be able to get two goals. Ball played back in the mix. And a punch from Ellie Muyal. Falls out to Ellinger, tries to have a chance. She's closed off by Valerie George, and that will do it from Varsity Field, 4-2. Coach Lane's women Fal women's Falcons. A fantastic performance. They did just enough defensively, but combated it with free-flowing attacking play. Excellent, excellent showing. The response from two successive 4-0 defeats. A resounding 4-2 victory. We'll be back shortly for the men's game against Lander in 30 minutes time. 